Morning and welcome to Cheltenham. Uh, at least I'm at the Cheltenham Chase Hotel, I think. Uh, I'm charging up and for the eagle-eyed viewers of you, you'll probably notice that I'm not in my Leaf today. I'm in uh, a 2018 uh, 40 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf. And the reason I'm in it is because I'm doing a bit of a road trip. It's about 200 miles in total today uh, to go and uh, meet Ian Sampson, who, if you watch the last video, you'll see that um, that whole story unfold. But um, for today, for this video, what I wanted to do was have a look at the charging, the charging of this car whilst you're out and about on a road trip and uh, see if it will affect me personally with my driving and what a difference it makes, if any, to the times that I have to sit and wait for charging. Good morning. Um, I've uh, arrived at one of your charges and uh, I've realised I haven't got my Polar card. Um, I'm, I spoke to one of your colleagues earlier on. They said that if I gave you a call and gave you my email address, you should be able to get me connected. I'm hoping that's all right. That is absolutely correct. What's Brilliant. your email address then? Thank you ever so much for your help. I really appreciate that. You too, take care. Bye-bye. So before I start, let me make it clear, I'm not doing a review of this car today. If you want to have a look at that, I did a video before and um, here's a link to it. You can have a look at the video and it will give you all my uh, views and opinions of this car. Uh, and to be honest, nothing's really changed since the last time I was in it. I, I do like it as a car as a whole, but um, have a look at that video and you'll see a bit more about it. So this is purely about um, one of those unanswered questions for me at the end of that last video uh, that I, I just, I was happy for probably 90 to 95% of my driving that I would be able to make this car work for me. And when I say make it work, I mean, I wouldn't have to do anything different. I'd be able to uh, go about my daily business and not have to worry about this whole rapid gate palaver that, um, that you see all over social media. But, what I didn't get a chance to do was find out for that 5% extra of my driving life with a car, would it work then? So those longer journeys that I do where I do have to charge maybe more than once, will it affect me in the way I drive? So that's what we're looking at today. Now, as I say, it's going to be about give or take 200 miles today. Let's start off with how do I drive this car? I drive this car like an ice car. Uh, I, most of today's driving is going to be on fast A roads and dual carriageways. I certainly don't potter around. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a lunatic and I don't break the speed limit everywhere I go, but I go with the flow of traffic and uh, I, I'm not into trying to eke out every last bit of mileage. I certainly don't uh, tailgate anyone. It's, it's dangerous, just don't do it. So I'm not doing any of that. Um, I'm not keeping my speed down to try and uh, keep the battery temperature down. You see people will talk about that. I know you can do that. I know you can drive at 55 miles an hour and you probably won't have any effects of rapid gate. I don't want to do that. I want to drive this. I, I want my electric car to be like my petrol car. I want to be able to get in it, drive it at the speed I want to drive it at, within reason, and, um, and when I charge, for it just to charge up. So that's what we're looking at today. Now, so far today, I have done 90, well, just over 95 miles. It's uh, my average miles per kilowatt hour is 3.8. And based on that, uh, so you know, I've been driving in B mode with eco off. If I'm in the town, I put the e-pedal on because I quite like it. If I'm out of the town, I take it off. Um, I have been using ProPilot quite a lot because as I say, they're fast A roads and dual carriageways. So I've been setting my maximum speed and um, it's really nice just to be able to let the car keep the distance behind the vehicle in front. It's great. So uh, that's how I've been driving it. The battery temperature at the moment, it's showing that uh, it is halfway, about 50% um, in, in its temperature range. So I don't actually get a temperature readout um, unless you can tell me where I can find it. I haven't been able to find it. I've just got this uh, little diagram to show that it's about halfway. And now I've uh, arrived at uh, this rapid charger. It's a charger card one, which I'm using through Polar, which interestingly enough, uh, I did forget my Polar card, but they're brilliant. I just phoned them up and they've connected me remotely. So uh, for some of the um, 
negativity I have given Polar in the past. Today, they've been absolutely brilliant. So I've been really pleased with that. Now for the important bit. First charge of the day, just under 100 miles in of what I would consider normal driving. So, and I haven't been on a motorway the whole time. So my speed has been um, fluctuating up and down. When I plugged it in, it said it was charging at 36 kilowatts. That's slower than I'd hoped. I was hoping it would be in the 40s, which is where I believe my 24 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf would have been. So clearly, right from the off, my driving has heated the battery up to a point where it's having to uh, allow the software to kick in and protect it, which for me is disappointing. I was hoping that I wouldn't have any throttling at all on this first charge. That said, it's not horrendous. So I've been here now for 30 minutes. Uh, it's just started dropping off again because I obviously we're getting towards the, the top end of filling the battery now. So it's just dropped to 28 kilowatts. It's saying I've got 53 minutes remaining, but I have gone over 75%. Uh, I'm at 77% and I've got 106 miles. So in 30 minutes, I have got 70 miles of charge, which I have to say is is all right, I don't mind that. So whilst I'm seeing that maybe I'm not charging at full rate, that actually time-wise isn't a million miles off my current one. So whilst yes, I would like to get it charged right up, actually that's not too bad. So after my initial disappointment, now discussing it with you, 30 minutes for 70 miles, it could be worse. I can live with that, that's okay. What will be interesting will be the next charge when I'm going home, to see how that affects it. And what I'm, my plan is to push on on the way home and try and catch a final charge before I get home, as opposed to doing an early one so that the temperature's back in the battery and see how that affects it. So that's where we are at the moment. Uh, that's what the car's doing. At the moment, I'm okay, but I'm hoping this isn't a sign for what's gonna happen later. Well, hello again and welcome to the drive home. Now, so far I have done 173 miles since I set off this morning. Now, uh, obviously I did the charge on the way up. The car sat idle for just over four hours and then we've started driving again or I've started driving again home. So 173 miles. When I arrived here, I had 29% battery, which um, at the time was showing that I had 41 miles left to go. The battery temperature was up towards three quarters. And when I plugged it in, it was showing that it was charging at 25 kilowatts. So it's definitely been throttled. Now I've been here for, says on the machine, just coming up for 20 minutes. I've put 8.1 kilowatt hours in. My battery is up to 41%, which has got me up to 60 miles. So it's not gonna be quick. It's not painful but it's not fast. So yeah, so not even 30 miles in 20 minutes. Yeah, that, that's definitely slower than if I brought my leaf. That said, I'm still holding on to the, I would have to do more stops in my leaf. So it's still not the end of the world, but I am a little bit disappointed, I've got to be honest. So let me see how this works itself out. Uh, I will finish the drive home. I'll get some screenshots of the state of the battery when I get home and the temperature, etc., And then I'll, I'll sum up what my feelings are and where that's left me with, is this the right car for me? Well, there we go. I'm home now and had a good chance to have a look at all the figures from uh, both charges. But let's start off with that second charge that I did on the way home, uh, just to get you up to date on how that looked. So I went from 18 to 58 percent, which is about 40 percent uh, increase in charge in my battery. According to the guessometers, that that gave me another 57 miles. So 30 minutes for 57 miles. Uh, my battery temperature was up to about three quarters. So it's definitely warming the battery up. So. Not quick not what I would hope it to be, but actually not much different to what I would get in my current leaf. So what I would like to happen is in uh, 30 minutes, me to race up to 80% charge in that um, 40 kilowatt hour leaf, uh, as does happen in my 24 kilowatt hour one, but obviously it, it, the battery's not as big. 
But that's clearly not happening. But that said, it's no slower at this point than my current leaf. So I can live with that. It's not ideal, but I can live with that. So let's fast forward. I, I got home and uh, obviously I didn't need to charge anymore because I got home and it just plugged into the, the um, charger overnight on my driveway. But when I got home, I had 12% of my battery left, which according to the guesser meter was 22 miles left. So that gave me a total driving distance for that entire day of 233 miles. So I did 233 miles with two rapid charges while I was out and about. I had 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour on, um, that was showing and the battery temperature, interestingly enough, because bear in mind the, the final leg of my journey was actually A and B roads. So I wasn't doing the speeds that I would have been doing on a dual carriageway, but the battery temperature had hit that first red mark. So it was really heating up by that point. So from that, what we can assume is had I plugged it into a rapid charger then, it would have been severely throttled to protect itself. So let's look how that compares against my 24 kilowatt hour leaf. Over the course of that journey, had I have taken that, um, that car with me, how many charges would I have to have done? And more importantly, how long would it have taken me? So I reckon that probably on the um, charge from home to the first rapid, I could have covered about 70 miles. Now, obviously this is all theory because it depends where the charges are along the route, but this is, I guess, best case scenario. So let's go with that. So 70 miles to the first charger. At the first charger, I would have sat there for approximately 30 minutes and that would have given me 60 miles until I need to stop again. So there's charge number one. I would have then done another 60 miles, there's charge number two, and another 60 miles, that's charge number three. So theoretically, that could have got me 250 miles of range. So three rapid charges while I'm out and about, and theoretically, each one would have taken approximately 30 minutes. It might have actually taken a little bit longer, but let's go on best case scenario. Three charges, 30 minutes, that's an hour and a half of charging. Well, I did in the 40 kilowatt hour leaf, two charges of 30 minutes each. So I've saved myself half an hour. So for me, over a journey of, and let's be honest, it could be up to now 250 miles, that, that saved me half an hour of sitting at a charger waiting for it to charge. So regardless of how quickly it charged up, it's quicker for me to do it in that 40 kilowatt hour leaf. And I would have driven that 40 kilowatt hour leaf an awful lot quicker than the 24 kilowatt hour leaf in order to eke my battery out to that. So it's two positives there if you like. Uh, the negative is that I would expect that car to be able to charge quicker than it charges, to be able to put more into that battery than it puts into it. And actually, I shouldn't have to stop that often. But if we're doing a direct comparison, and bear in mind, this for me is that final look at it. I like the car, I've tested the car, I enjoy driving the car. Could I live with it 100% of the time? And I think I'm 99% there. I've got to be honest. Um, the, the theory that I had in my first video about the 40 kilowatt hour leaf when I reviewed it was that I could drive from the south coast where I live up to Manchester, that's the furthest I ever really drive, without having to worry about the battery overheating or any issues around rapid gate and me sitting in a service station for hours on end just waiting for a charge, where in fact I could have probably done it quicker in my 24 kilowatt hour leaf with more regular charging. I think this journey has proved that I could do that journey. Now I only do that once, at most twice a year. So actually that's not gonna cause me any problems at all. From what I've seen on that journey that I did uh, up to Gloucester, 250 miles, I could do that with two charges and driving at dual carriageway and motorway speeds, and I'm talking about driving in lane two or lane three on the motorway, following the traffic, two charges it can do and that could get me 250 miles and I wouldn't be taking any longer than I would in, in my other leaf. In fact, the other leaf would take an awful lot longer to, to do it. So I'm saying 99% of my journeys I would be happy to do in the 40 kilowatt hour leaf. 
actually it's 100% because I've just explained that all my journeys that I've done over the last three and a half, four years, I could do comfortably in that leaf and not worry about the charging. I've got that 1% reservation because I'm just disappointed. I'm disappointed that actually I can't do that in one charge because the battery doesn't charge quick enough. I'm disappointed that I've got to sit at the charge maybe a few minutes longer than I anticipated I would have had to have. I wanted it to, to charge quicker and be better than my current leaf. Well, clearly it's better. It just seems that it charges at about the same rate, which is my disappointment. But would I buy one? I don't know that I would go all out and buy one now at the price that they're retailing for at the moment, but perhaps secondhand, perhaps when the 60 kilowatt hour one comes out and maybe the prices start to drop, then it might become a realistic uh, proposition to me. But at the moment, prices are really strong and for what extra that would give me above and beyond where I am at the moment, I think I'm gonna sit tight and perhaps the 30 kilowatt hour one is an option for me now. Uh, I'm, I think I need to have one of those on a long-term test to see how it works for me day to day and perhaps then see how it works for me on a similar long journey. So perhaps that's the next step for me. But uh, still very, very positive on that 40 kilowatt hour leaf. Uh, rapid gate is an issue, there's no question about it. And uh, I wish I could say to you that I, I can ignore it and it's not an issue, but I can't. It's nagging away in the back of my mind. But that said, not a major uh, issue for me in actually all of the journeys that I do. So that's where we are, that's answered that final question for me. Uh, let's just see how things evolve now over the next few months until I get to the end of the contract on my current leaf and then hopefully there'll be a few more options that we can explore. But that's it for now, hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight if you were kind of in the same position as me because I think my journeys and my traveling are pretty similar to the vast majority of people out there. So hopefully that's given you a realistic insight into day-to-day -day driving and what you can expect from that leaf. But um, for now, if you've enjoyed it, if you can remember to hit like and share, and if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. And um, thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you next time.